So the last thing we should talk about in this segment is R Markdown. So I've told you how most people use RStudio to interact with R. Not everyone, but almost everyone who uses R. Similarly, almost everyone who uses R uses these files called R Markdown in order to present and share their R code. So I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on with R Markdown. So let's start with just Markdown. So without the R in front of it, this is an existing uh, language that predates R Markdown. It's what's called a markup language, and all that means is if you start in your source file with certain special symbols and weird looking formatting, it's going to know how to take that information and turn it into a really nice pretty output document. So if you ever see a document with .md as the extension, compared to say .text or .doc for Microsoft Office, these ones are the file type markdown, they have .md, and this is the basic markup language. So here's what it looks like. So we can see here, there's some weird stuff going on on the left-hand pane, right? On that pane, you've got um, symbols being used, you've got asterisks being used, brackets, parentheses, all that good stuff. And then if you look on the right, that's what happens when that markup language knows to generate a beautiful document. It knows to take those asterisks and turn them into italics or bold, and to take equations and make them look like equations, all that stuff. So this is Markdown, and Markdown is not necessarily tied to R. But now we have a tool called R Markdown. And so what this does is it takes all that power of Markdown and also incorporates the ability to run and display the output of R code. It actually works for many languages besides R, which is pretty cool. You can even mix and match. But in this class, we're only going to, of course, use it for R. And so R Markdown files have the .rmd extension, not just md, but rmd. And here's kind of what it looks like, almost the same as the previous one in style. But now we can see here, in addition to all that markup formatting, we also have these kind of gray chunks. They're literally called code chunks. And in these gray chunks, we've written R code. You might not recognize this uh, image function here. I don't think you've played with it yet, but you can imagine what it does. It makes some kind of image. And then we can see on the right hand side, it has been converted actually in this case to a Microsoft Word document. And so in that document, you have all the formatting from the markup language from Markdown. And then you also can see the R code, and you can also see the output of the R code. And so that's pretty cool. I, I wonder if you remember the days, um, if you've ever done a project where you've had to like make an image and put that image in Microsoft Word, and then when you move it into Microsoft Word, all the paragraphs get all messed up and everything is horrible and annoying, and then you realize you made a mistake in the image, so you have to remake it. Maybe this is a horror story that I live through that you guys don't have to live through anymore, um, being the technology babies that you are. But regardless, I hope you can see how convenient this is, that we can intersperse regular old text with R code and even R output. So as you're looking at an R markdown file, which you're going to do in a moment, there's kind of three things to look for. At the very top, you're always going to have this front matter. The front matter is called YAML. You don't need to know that. And you can probably infer what it's doing here, right? You can see there's a title, an author, a date, and then some type of output that you would like this file to convert to. And so as you do assignments and as you practice in this class, of course, you'll want to give it a reasonable title, give yourself credit, and all that. But other than those things, you don't right now have to worry about that front matter. And then in the document, as you look through it, what you're seeing is the markup language, the markdown text with its specific formatting. And you're seeing these R code chunks where you're writing your R code. Now the process by which that source file becomes a beautiful document is called knitting. We knit our R markdown file. And you can see in this screenshot, there's a knit button very helpfully at the top of the pane in RStudio. And you can see that it will actually knit to many different formats. It can be HTML, PDF, or Word. If you don't know much about th those formats, don't sweat it. Uh, you may in the future find it useful in your lives to knit to PDF or Word, but in this class we're just going to stick to HTML. It's the one that you can use without installing or dealing with anything special on your computer. So everybody is HTML right now. We are knitting our R Markdown document to HTML. And before I set you on your way to try this out, I would like to clarify a few things about knitting, some common mistakes that I see. So first of all, knitting is not the same as saving. You don't have to fully knit a file, take that source code and blah, 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 generate a beautiful output in order for you to save your work. 
Because really, you're just typing in that source file. This is just an ordinary document, like a Microsoft Word document, like a text document. And so any way that you're used to saving stuff, that still exists for a R Markdown file. You can use the Control S shortcut or Command S on a Mac. You can click on the little save icon, which is a floppy disk icon. I think that's one of those things that you babies know and you laugh at us when we think you don't know it. But if you didn't know it, that was a real physical object called a floppy disk, and it's a little picture, and there is one in our, uh, in our studio that you can click to save. Or if you like the drop-down menu, you go to File, you click Save As. Any of these methods by which you are hopefully already accustomed to saving documents, they still apply. A .rmd document is not really that special. And so what you should be doing as you work is you should be saving very, very frequently. Anytime you've changed something and you hope that you won't lose it if there's a sudden power outage, you save. You should really get in the habit of just control S, control S, control S, or whatever you do to save things really, really regularly. Knitting, you don't need to knit as regularly. Knitting, you don't have to go through the whole process of generating this beautiful document when really all you're trying to do is sort of make sure that you've checkpointed your work. Now having said that, you do want to knit as you go along, and some of our exercises will practice this. You don't want to wait till the very end to knit. But I want to be really clear about the difference between knitting and saving here. Now when you click that knit button, there's three things that are going to happen. First of all, your file will be saved. So they're not the same thing, but it does get saved when you knit. More importantly, second of all, all of the R code that you've written in those chunks is going to get run again. So what I mean is, anything that's happening in your current R Studio, anything that you've typed in that doesn't have to do with this current R Markdown document, it doesn't matter. When we knit the document, we're kind of starting from scratch, jumping into a new universe, it's actually called an environment, and then going through and running that code in order in this fresh, clean universe. And then once that's all been run, the output's been generated, then our Markdown knows how to take uh, the, markdown, the markup language, all those symbols, and all of what it just ran in R, put them together, and spit out for you a beautiful new file. And so just some small details. If your RMD file, your R Markdown file, is called lab1, surely you will have one soon, then it automatically creates a file called lab1.html. So you don't have to think about, oh, how do I save this to HTML? When you click the knit button, that file that you want is created. And that file is going to live in the same place of wherever you saved your lab1.rmd file. So let's give this a go. Let's make our first R Markdown document. And this completes your first module for the class. See you soon.